Whatever rots your socks, whatever spins your top Whatever winds your watch, whatever flips your flop Whatever turns you on, whatever flies your flag Whatever bangs your gong or whatever swings your bag Do it often but do it well Cause nobody knows and there's no way to tell When the ride ends Good morning. Welcome back to Turtle Beach. I'm going to try to get this done in a hurry because the sun's about to come up over here. And as soon as it tops those trees, I'm going to get blasted by uh, heat and sunlight. And, and we don't like that. So I'm going to try to get this done. This week's video is called Things I Love About Thailand. Now you could make a joke of that and just say everything. Thank you for watching, like, subscribe, and share. But no, I actually have a list. It's not a complete list because I like all sorts of stuff here. I find new things to like every day or love every day. That's the title, love. Uh, but uh, this, is, this is a preliminary list, all right? First thing I love about Thailand is Turtle Beach. I'm gonna move this real quick and let you see what I'm looking at, what I look at, oh, sorry, every morning. Yeah, nobody watches Steve's videos for their technical quality. <laughs> yeah, technique, who needs it? Uh, yeah, so number one thing I love about Thailand is having coffee on Turtle Beach in the morning. And again, your Turtle Beach is out there. Turtle Beach is a state of mind. Boonjong is the best beach bar in Thailand, only exists in my head. You can buy souvenirs though. Uh, your Turtle Beach is out there. I got a friend, Maddie, who says that Nana Plaza is his Turtle Beach. And I went with him one night to Nana Plaza and he is certainly as happy in a Nana go-go bar as I am sitting on this beach. There's no denying it. That's Maddie's Turtle Beach. Your Turtle Beach is out there. It's probably not here unless you can bring something to fill your time, because there's nothing here, there's no go-go's. That's why Maddie's never visited me. There's no go-go's, there's no discos, there's no bars, there's no bar beers, there's no, very few other falang, uh, no falang food. Uh, so this probably isn't for you. Uh, it is for me. And if I can find my Turtle Beach, so can you. And that's the number one thing I love about this country, having coffee in the morning, on Turtle Beach. Second thing I love is the public health care system. Uh, Monday morning, Monday or Tuesday, the 6th, on my 66th birthday, I had an inguinal hernia repair, the old fashioned open mesh. And don't in the comment section quote me some study you saw online uh, that open mesh is dangerous. Those studies are <laughs> promoted and distributed by the companies that make the keyhole surgery equipment, that make the laparoscopes, uh, and the surgeons who can charge you, you know, five times more for that kind of surgery. Open mesh is perfectly fine. I've probably transcribed a hundred of the things. Uh, it's a, we've been doing it a hundred years and, and it works fine. So I went to the government hospital in Panga. Two nights in the hospital, all the meds, surgery, in an OR that looked to my layman's eyes to be as well equipped as any OR in New Mexico, uh, which is where I came here from. 10,500 baht. That's 300 US dollars, I think, roughly 300 US dollars. Uh, 10,000 baht for open uh, surgery and meds and, uh, and a bed for two nights. That's amazing. You can't get your teeth cleaned in New York City for $300. But of course, uh, here, nurses expect to take vitals and administer meds and do dressing changes. Nurses don't expect to make your bed or empty your bedpan or your urinal or bring you food or, or uh, give you sponge baths or anything like that. 
you're expected to bring somebody to do those tasks. So in my ward, I was in the male ward and there were about 10 guys in there, at least half of them old guys dealing with diabetes. They had toes removed, in one case, a whole foot removed. And each of them had an old Muslim woman sleeping on the floor next to their bed. And that woman was a, a wife or a sister or a child uh, who was taking care of them, you know, putting on, giving them massages. Oh boy, massages are big, aren't they? You know, it's not just, massage in this country is not those stupid shops you see, hey, sexy man, where you go? Uh, massage is a big deal and it is uh, relied on in the world of health uh, tremendously. And so you bring somebody who's gonna massage your legs while you're getting over the amputation of two of your toes. Uh, and uh, I wanna tell you something. I did an interview, God, almost two years ago with a channel called Tyrus Times, a guy named Pete, very good interviewer. Pete is a very stable, centered, solid guy. And he provides a wonderful sounding board against which his interview subjects can bounce absolutely anything. Uh, he's a terrific uh, interview partner. And uh, if you wanna see a much fatter Steve Ross, you know, I've lost, I don't know, by now probably 20 pounds uh, in 18 months. You wanna see what the big fat dumpling looked like when he got here, uh, That or, or I think that was about six months before I came. Uh, I had come on a survey trip and, and Pete interviewed me about one of my books. Yeah, if you're one of those two people out there who still reads books, I got books for sale on Amazon about Thailand. Uh, but anyway, uh, one of the reactions, that, that, that interview is, is in terms of views, the most successful thing I've ever done on YouTube. It's got 150,000 views, I think by now. And uh, in it, I, I say, I'm going to come here with just my social security. That's what I've got. I have no investments. I own no property. I get 1500 US, about 50,000 baht a month. And that's what I'm gonna live on. And oh my God, old white guys in Thailand get very, very angry if you're not rich. And I think part of it is, is they played by the rules their whole lives. They were responsible, they were careful, they put off their own pleasures until retirement. They came with a big whack of money. They bought some anonymous tacky condo in Padia and they eat Falang food every day and they don't speak Thai, but they feel like they've earned this. And Steve Ross coming here with just his social security didn't earn it, right? Steve Ross was never careful or smart with money in his life. And so he comes with nothing but social security. And all of these guys said either A, in six months, he's gonna jump off a balcony or B, he's going to die alone and broke in a government hospital and the ties are gonna have to subsidize his hospice. And these guys got really angry. I mean, they were really angry at me about this more than anything else I said. These like, I don't like, you know, fat white guys who don't speak Thai and Padia. They didn't get angry about that. They got angry that Steve thought he could live here on 1500 US a month and Steve's gonna die alone in a government hospital. And I thought, why are these guys so angry? And why do they assume that this is gonna be the end of my life? I've, I've got plenty of money. And I think in almost two years now, 18 months anyway, I've proven it. I haven't spent my whole social security uh, in any month that I've been here. And I just paid out of pocket 10,500 baht uh, for a, uh, a hernia surgery. And I had said I was gonna give up my weekends. Uh, uh, you know, once a month, I take myself for a millionaire's weekend on Phuket. And I do all the things that old fat white guys do in Phuket. And uh, I said, boy, I'm gonna have to quit this for a couple months or three months or four months to get the money to pay for this surgery. No, 10,500 baht's not even one weekend. So uh, at any rate, uh, I love the Thai healthcare system. Both my kids were born in government hospitals in Renong. Uh, but there was a guy, there were two Farang in this ward, 10 guys, two of us white. Uh, this other guy is dying, he says, of cancer, though a lot of what he said didn't jive. A lot of what he said eh, seemed to be made up. 
Uh, but he, he is very evidently dying. He was a big, burly, tough guy up until a, a year or so ago, judging from his Facebook page. And uh, whatever he's got, it's killing him. His, his, his legs, his arms and legs are spindle thin, but his body is swollen like a tick with ascites. His liver is shutting down and his skin is gray tinged with yellow. Uh, his eyes are tinged with yellow. He's, he, he's, his liver shutting down, he's dying. He also has a huge open wound where they've removed some kind of tumor. And twice a day, that wound gets dressing and this guy screams. Now I'm sure it hurts. It's a big open wound and there didn't appear to be any granulation tissue to me. It doesn't appear to be healing. Uh, they took it out 10, they took the tumor out 10 days ago and he does not appear to be healing at all from that surgery. And so every day they re remove the dressings and they cleanse that wound and it's fairly painful, I'm sure. But he makes a fuss, you know, upstairs women are having babies without a peep, natural childbirth without screaming, without hollering. Uh, granted their babies are only as big as walnuts, but uh, he, he makes a big fuss because he wants uh, morphine. He's trapped in a bed, flat on his back. He can't get up to even shed. He's got to use a bedpan. And again, he didn't bring anybody to take care of him. And these nurses are tired of cleaning him after his, he uses the bedpan and emptying his bedpan. And, and uh, oh, he won't eat Thai food. He can't say kap hun kap. He can't say ka tot. He says he lived on soy bung la for a year and spent all his money. That's why he's broke and he's stuck in a, in a government hospital in Panga because he's been kicked out of Bangkok Phuket Hospital, kicked out of Wachira Hospital, and finally they shuttled him somehow to Panga and stuck the doctors in Panga with him and they're not happy at all. And the nurses aren't happy at all. They hate him, they hate him. He's impolite, he never smiles, he, he refuses to eat Thai food. Uh, he can't clean himself up. And when they have to do the dressing change, which is stressful on a healthcare provider, having to cause that much pain, uh, he, he screams and hollers and, and makes a big fuss. Bite a towel, dude. Bite down on a towel and show them how tough you are and you'll earn their respect. But you gotta bring someone to take care of you. And I said, dude, you need somebody. He said, I have nobody. I have no family. My family won't talk to me. They don't have any money. Nobody wants to have anything to do with me. Call your embassy. Oh, the embassy wouldn't care, this, that, and the other thing. So he's there alone and he's gonna die. And it pissed me off because they would look at me as he's screaming or as he's making this demand or that demand or not apologizing, not saying, I'm sorry, you have to do this. I'm sorry, you have to do this job. You have to wipe my ass. I'm sorry. Uh, instead of, you know, being a, 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 uh, a more pleasant human being in that bed, he's, a, he's being a rat bastard to these nurses. And, uh, ding, I twig for the first time. This is why these fat old white guys who saw the interview with the Irish Times got angry at me. They thought I was going to end up like that. I promise you, I will not. I will not. I have watched hundreds of people die in hospital beds, literally hundreds. And well, I have transcribed the last weeks of hundreds of people, including the father of my best friend in high school. And Mark was coming to visit his dad at Mercy Hospital when I worked there and I couldn't approach him. There's a thing called HIPAA, it's an act of Congress. You cannot, if it's not part of your job, you cannot speak to a, a patient or a visitor. And so Mark would come every day to visit his dying father. And I was transcribing his father going around and around the drain and seeing Mark in the hallways and not being able to approach him and say, I'm sorry about your dad. Uh, so I've, I've transcribed or witnessed in the VA hospital, basically that's hospice. Uh, people, old soldiers come to die at the VA. So I've watched, you know, a lot of people uh, go through their last days in the hospital. Even in the West, I wouldn't do that. I, I don't want to spend my last days on earth lying in a hospital bed, staring at the ceiling over the bed, thinking how many other people have died and that's their last mortal vision of life. No, there's, a, there's, 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 there's ways to painlessly leave this world. And uh, Steve will find one of those when the time comes. The time's not gonna come here for a long, long time. I'm convinced now. I thought I would die within a year of getting here and I have not. How about that? 
lived through this surgery with seven stents in my heart. How about that? My lower body has all adhesions. Adhesions are where you have surgery and they stitch it back together and then the body glues itself back together. You know, your organs aren't just like piled all slippy sloshy in your, your peritoneum. Uh, everything sticks together down there. It's called adhesing. And uh, why it's not called adhering, I don't know. Uh, but at any rate, I've had append appendectomy and I've had a prostate enucleation. So I've had two abdominal surgeries there on the lower right. So this guy was having to cut through a lot of adhesions to get to the hernia to, to fix it. Uh, I lived through that. I've lost, I don't know what I say, uh, uh, 20 pounds maybe in, in, in 18 months. I was riding the bicycle. I will continue to, at any rate, yeah, it's not going to happen. I'm not going to end up in that bed like that guy. But I understand now why these old fat white guys in Padia and Bangkok got angry at me for thinking I could come here and live just on my social security. I get it, you guys, I get it. Next thing I love about Thailand, this is already 15 minutes, affordability. Everything is very cheap. Open hernia mesh repair, 10,500 baht. You know, I eat lunch for, I can if I wanna ride out on the highway, eat pad thai for 30 baht. It's a good pad thai, 45 baht with an oleang. If you've never had pad thai with oleang, the bitterness of the coffee, I don't, I'm not, I mean, maybe chicory, I'm not sure it's really coffee, but the bitterness of the oleang with the sweetness of the pad thai and you get the texture of the peanuts in there and the, the, the fresh sprouts and oh my God, that's good. 45 baht, it's about a buck and a quarter, $1.25 for lunch. My rent, 6,000 baht to live on this beach. Yeah, nobody, nobody comes to Steve's videos for their technical quality. Uh, paying bills at 7-Eleven. I just love that. I pay water, electric, phone, and internet at 7-Eleven. Yeah, it's easy. It's wonderful. It's great. I love it. Uh, the bum gun. Enough said, right? Dude. Ha! How, why there's not a bum gun next to every toilet in America, I don't know. Damn, is that refreshing. And yeah, if you want to use toilet paper to dry off when you're done, groovy, do that. That's why you can throw the, the toilet paper in the wastebasket. Don't flush it. Don't assume that this septic system will digest cellulose. Don't, don't flush it. Uh, but if you've used the bum gun first, that toilet paper will be relatively clean and you can just drop it in the wastebasket that's always provided. Uh, but oh my God, you feel so clean. Or even better still, particularly in the hot season, take a shower. Right? Get up off the pot and take a shower. Oh, I love it. The bum gun. Shaking hands with Thai men. Try it, dudes. They only know what they've seen of the West. They only know what they've seen on movies. On movies, shaking hands is an exclusively male thing that expresses respect. Now, remember, all these people are walking around 24-7 their whole lives looking for expressions of obeisance and respect. They're trained to do that. Where'd this guy put his hands when he wired me? I'm a cop, dude, put him up here. Don't keep him down here on your chest, right? I'm a monk, uh, I am nobility, I'm your boss, uh, I'm your father or mother. They're constantly judging each other on their expressions of obeisance. The shaking of hands, as far as they know, is something only men do to show respect for another man. Offer it. See what happens. Offer your hand. If somebody, the mechanic, fixes your bike and you're very pleased with it, not a waiter, you know, but your lawyer, your, your landlord, whoever it is, you're, you're signing a contract, offer your hand to a man. He'll be very pleased. He won't know what to do with it. He'll stick his hand out and you grasp his hand and give it a little squeeze. Uh, and they'll be very pleased. They understand, you know, among men in the West, shaking hands is like a deep Y. And they'll be pleased. It's like getting to show off their English. Hello, where you go? And that's all they know, right? But they'll truck that out, right? Hello, where you go? And shaking hands, try it, try it. They know it and they like it, usually. Usually they like it. If they're from the boonies and they don't watch Western movies, 
maybe they don't know it. But try shaking hands with the Thai guys, not a waiter, again, not a bartender, but uh, somebody who does you a favor. Offer your hand, see what happens, watch their face. Uh, legal uh, legal uh, broccoli, enough said, right? Legal broccoli, things I love about Thailand. The month after I got here, ha, they decriminalized it. It's like, oh, thank God, Steve's finally back. Let's throw him a bone, right? <laughs> Low crime. Everybody who lives here is poor. By my standards, everybody who lives here is poor. Those nurses in that hospital, they make 12,000 by the month. I make 50, specifically not working. My government pays me not to work, and they pay me 50,000 by the month. These nurses work like dogs. Any nurse in any hospital is overworked, under-resourced, and even so, I went to the OR, I left my phone and my uh, medallion, uh, my dime, it's just a dime, but it's my good luck charm. I've worn it for, I don't know, 20 years now. Uh, at any rate, uh, I left everything out on the, the bedside table. Didn't worry at all. Everybody else in there, like I said, they're old Muslim women sleeping on the floor in there. These are poor people on the 30 baht a day scheme, right? These are fishermen and uh, pineapple, uh, agrarian workers, right? They cut rubber, they cut weeds, they, they, they cut palm nut. And, you know, the guy opposite me, the, the Falang who's dying there, uh, he had his la he had everything he owned in a couple backpacks under his bed, everything, everything he owns. His car is parked in the parking lot. Don't ask me how all this happened because his stories didn't quite match up. But his car is apparently parked in the parking lot. His, uh, he's been there 10 days. His car is still parked outside. He's got everything he owns in a couple backpacks under his bed, including what looked to me like a fairly nice laptop. Uh, I assume he's probably got a watch, some jewelry in there. Here comes the sun. I'm going to wrap this up. The sun is nobody's friend in Thailand. Stay the hell out of the sun. That is not one of the things I love about Thailand. Uh, but anyway, nobody, you know, nobody was afraid. I didn't lock my door. I'm just across the street. But I'll often go to the market, not bother to lock my door. Uh, there's very low crime here, especially considering how poor these people are. Um, you know, for the run of the mill. There's wealthy people in Thailand, right? Probably you. Uh, but uh, I don't worry about crime at all. The key to the motorcycle, because I always lose keys, the key to the motorcycle runs around in a little cup, like a cup holder in the front console of the motorbike. And I'll go anywhere and just park that bike, put my helmet on the mirror and walk away. The key to the bike is right there, right? I have never, ever, I don't even lock the yoke. I don't, it's just very, very rare, I think. Crime, other than conning you out of something, selling you a crappy condo in Chiang Mai or Phuket or Padia. Yeah, that crime's everywhere. Yeah, if you've got a lot of money, you got to be careful. If you're middle class or lower, you don't need the kuokamoi, I don't think. I, I, I never have. The last thing I want to mention is Bangkok Days by Lawrence Osborne. Uh, absolutely fantastic book. Uh, probably the best creative fiction. Uh, it's not creative, uh, nonfiction, creative nonfiction. Probably the best creative nonfiction ever produced about the city of Bangkok maybe about uh, the, the, all of Thailand. And I include Borderlines by Charles Nickel. I include any of my books. Uh, and I include My Pen Rye Means Nevermind uh, by Carol Hollinger. I think Lawrence Osborne is an amazing artist. And I've read his fiction, which is great. I But boy, Bangkok Days is heartfelt, uh, spooky, weird, uh, imaginative, Gorgeous language, absolutely gorgeous language. I wish I had a copy to, to show you. Bangkok Days by Lawrence Osborne, that's 23 minutes. That's a very long monologue. Thank you for watching. Like, subscribe, and share. Know that I love you. Know that this time is the most important time of my week. And this is something I love very much about Thailand. Never occurred to me in 25 years of dreaming about coming back to this place and finding a beach like this. I never imagined I'd have a YouTube channel and that people would, thousands of people would sit and listen to me spew bullshit like this. I really appreciate it. I love you guys. I love you a lot. Uh, have a terrific week. I'll see you next week.
Whatever shapes your sheep, whatever bakes your clam Whatever digs your feet, whatever smokes your ham Whatever blows your nose, whatever chews your bone Whatever squirts your hose, whatever sings your song Do it after but do it well Nobody knows and there's no way to tell When you ride and This is that you be doing down to the You be have a brutal job doing that day Shoot it, shoot it, shoot it up, shoot down to that down to 